That's a synagogue in a house of a rabbi. His name is there, the Rabbi Heim Pinchuk. Since 1895? 1895. Yes. All right. Are you going to show us? Yeah. All right. Do you think the rabbi will be home? No. It's Shabbat this year. Oh. Only every Saturday. Okay. To pray. Watch out. Here it is. Here you go. If you, if you tell him that you are Jewish, he can't let you go to the inside. I think he might be on. I think we might not be able to fake <laughs> yeah, it too. I think the rabbi might tell we're not Jewish. Yeah. Did you ever, I'm a, since you're a rabbi, I'm assuming you have, have you ever made Aliyah, gone to Israel? I never did. You never visited? I went once on vacation a year ago. I think in 1977. <laughs> okay. Oh, 1970. That must be hard going from Morocco to Israel in 1977. No, I went from Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes it much easier. <laughs> so he's coming. This is the house of uh, Rabbi Chaim Pinto. Are you? Are you not a rabbi? He is my grandfather. Oh, okay, wow. In 1895, um, five. Five, uh, he lived here? Your grandfather lived here? Yes, he lived here. He came from uh, Esawira. Yeah, Esawira? That's his dress. His grandfather also. That's his dress. Oh, wow. Behind oh, right. That's his clothes. I'm going to ask a question that I already know the answer to, I'm pretty sure, but you're a Sephardi? Sure. Yeah, okay. Most of, uh, most of the Moroccan Jews are Sephardi. I don't know if the, the, the Sephardi you do. means they came from Spain. Uh, I was going to ask, do you speak Ladino? Uh, not really, not that. Could you, any? A little bit? No, because you know, uh, we left in 1492. And you don't keep it up since then? <laughs> <laughs> but why not? <laughs> yeah, some people uh, speak uh, Ladino still? Right in Ladino, you know, but uh, the, the young one, you know, we learned Arabic, you know. We, and French. Of course, Hebrew. Mm -hmm. um, what year was it that uh, the, you know how there was a year when many, many Jews leave for Israel? They do the airlift? What year was that? 1948. 1948. Okay, that was earlier That's than I when, thought. Exactly. That's okay. When, uh, the Moroccan Jews, uh, many of them left. We left in 1967. Mm -hmm. to, we went to Canada because my mother's family was there. So they prepared, the, you know, they made the papers for us. Uh, we didn't feel comfortable in 1967 yeah. here, you know. Did you guys, uh, did this community have a celebration, like what, last year when Israel was recognized by Morocco? I guess so, uh, of course. You guys, of did course, you guys have like happy a... happy to, to have this kind of... Because uh, now you can travel more easily, correct? Exactly. Now mm -hmm. there is planes going and coming back from Israel. Do many of the Jews here make Aliyah? Do they move to Israel? I think half of Israel is originally from Morocco. <laughs> <laughs> and Algeria, right? Or is that France? Mostly that Morocco. Okay. Because uh, there were 500,000 Jews in Morocco. Oh, wow. At a certain time. And uh, now there is only 2,000. Uh, most of them went to Israel, but many went also to Canada, United States, France. Um, I have actually family in all these countries. Oh, wow. Uh, France, Canada, United States, and of course in Israel. But mostly, most of the Pinto family is in, uh, in Israel. Did you hear about Jared Kushner, right? Uh-huh. He came and uh, light the candle. And oh, Jared Kushner came here? Do you have a picture he of that? He came and he... Uh, he lit the candles here? He light the candle on the tomb of Rabbi Chaim Pinto. You wow. see the, the, oh, the tomb is over there, and there is a little thing there. They light the candles in there, you know? And Jared so Kushner came. And, uh, he light the candle when he was in visit in Morocco. Actually, when he was in visit, visiting Morocco, that was the starting point of when the he made talks. Uh, when he arranged peace between uh, Morocco and Israel, you know. What area of Morocco would you say is the best place to experience Morocco's Jewish like culture and heritage? Is there like a village or a town or a section of a city? Any city in Morocco has what we call a melach, and the melach was a Jewish district. 
And of course, Jews were, were everywhere in Morocco. So that's why we have a rabbi I told you. in every city. Obviously, this was part of Vichy France during the Second World War. Did the Holocaust ever come to Morocco in any sort of way? No. They never no, did a the portion? The king of Morocco protected the Jews. The king of Morocco protected the Jews yeah, against protected the, the Vichy the, and the Germans. He refused to give them. The Germans. Uh, yeah. He, he said, they are my, uh, my people and you don't touch them, you know. Uh, even uh, France was at that time controlling Morocco. The king was against completely any, anything that would happen to his Jews, you know? Oh, that's, that's really good then. See, because we are Muslim and Palestinians are Muslim, we're gonna hate Jewish. It doesn't make sense. These are politics from uh, governments. They fight for land, for gas. Well, people who are used to live together, we love each other. So no hateness, no war between Moroccans and Jewish. Yeah, you are. Actually, the, uh, the Jews were defending, uh, yeah. even, uh, you know, when they had problems in the Sahara. There were a lot of Jews living in the south of Morocco, and they were with the, the Arabs, mm. helping them, you know, to defend the, the place. They were with the, the Sahrawi, or they were with the Moroccan? There, uh, there, there always were, had been a problem in the Sahara, the Spanish people and the Algerians mm -hmm. are saying the Sahara is part of their country, but... Uh, but the Jewish people were loyal to, to Morocco? Morocco. It, it always belonged to Morocco. Mm -hmm. It was only Morocco, carved off by colonization, right? Mm -hmm. Morocco had, uh, had controlled a, a very big part of, uh, you know, Not that Morocco until the south and, and, and even part of Algeria, you know? Even part of Spain. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Spain actually was, you know, the, the yeah, uh, controlled from here, the control, Al Almoravid, yeah. right? Something yeah, like. in that time. Yeah. So, uh, and of course it, it had reduced after, but the Sahara belongs to Morocco. <laughs> 26 of Elul, that the river of Rabbi Chaim Pinto the first, and this is Rabbi Chaim Pinto the second. This one, Yudva, which is 16 of Cheshvan. The like to me, I have my grandfather's name. My grandfather is Omar. Omar. He, he gave me the name. So you guys both have like the same. one 24 years old when he was dying. <laughs> so, this is a mosque. That time, they cannot put the name. Why? Because Spanish used to, to beat them, to make them uh, like Hitler. Mm -hmm. That's for Jewish, also Spanish. And Muslim protect them. When the uh, Spanish passport from by here, they say, oh, this is just a mosque. You can't say the name of the synagogue. Mm -hmm. The mosque in the, <laughs> the Jewish Museum. <laughs> look at the pathway, it looks like that. Oh, wow, yeah. Oh, look at the cactuses. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> it's outrageous! Oh, look, there's a US dollar in there. South Africa. Mm. We are the animal planet. So we're here at the Jewish Museum in Casablanca, and this is actually the first Jewish museum in Morocco and in the entire Muslim slash Arab world. So definitely come here if you want to see some history. Okay guys, so we just finished speaking with the director. She showed us around. Unfortunately, we can't video in here because they're in the middle of restorations and renovations, so they're making this place look completely different. So if you come here in the near future, it's gonna be a totally different place than what we saw today. But she told us about the history of this place and how Morocco is basically the culmination of Berber, Arab, Andalusian, as well as many other cultures. That's what this actually talks about. And it talks about how people came from the museum and her specifically talked about people who came with Spanish and influence from all over the Mediterranean. And they also told us about how this place is actually funded and encouraged by the current king of the country, Muhammad VI, and how he's encouraging them to go out and restore um, synagogues and Jewish cemeteries all 
all over the country. There's, what, 200 cemeteries that they've restored, um, from what she told us, and that's not even mentioning all the synagogues nationwide. So if you come here and you guys pay to come and in, enter this place, you're helping a really good cause because they're gonna further the history of Morocco. Because the history of Morocco isn't just the Berber people, it's not just the Arab people, it's not just the Muslim people, it's also the Jews who have been here alongside them for most of their history. From the way she explained it, it seems like the Moroccan people have a certain special veneration for the, for the Jews that lived in Morocco, being that the first community, the way that she put it, the ancient Moroccans, the Berber people, many of them were Jewish, so they see them as a very ancient community in Morocco. All right, guys, we learned a lot today. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, tell us in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.